And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the patch 2.9 notes. That's right. We have a new patch with Legends of Runeterra June 1st here um, where we're going to have maybe some card changes. Um, I'm not sure. It just came out just a couple of minutes ago. I haven't gone through and read through them yet. This is going to be our live reaction to them. Kind of set the stage a little bit. Uh, we do know that Aurelia Azir, Thresh Nasus, um, those decks are, are like the two most popular decks for sure. They're very big. They're very good. Um, I know a lot of people don't like Aurelia Azir because of just how fast it can kill you and just how brutal it can be when it has a really good hand. Um, but I kind of, myself personally, I actually like the play patterns that like Aurelia Azir, Thresh Nasus have. But I do admit that I think the decks are probably a little too good. But I would just want like a little, like small tweaks around the edges to the decks. You know, like with really Azir, for example, I've always kind of said that like maybe Inspiring Marshall only give plus one plus zero and maybe make it a little bit smaller. You know, stuff like that. I think that just that there could be some little tweaks um, with Thresh Nasus. Maybe you could do um, some tweaks to, let's see, like the different followers or even like Doomkeeper. Right, like Doomkeeper is in both decks. Maybe Doomkeeper could be a one two instead of a two one. Um, so a one two that makes a Sand Soldier. So it's attacking for three on turn one, not four. Being able to attack for four on turn one, getting uh, you know twenty percent of your health, that's a lot. So that could be something. Merciless Hunter, I I don't think needs fearsome at all. I think they could get rid of the fearsome on that. Also, maybe make it a three three instead of a four three. They could do those kind of things. Um, so that could be some some stuff they could they could do. But let's so let's see. So you know it's exciting. We got these brand new patch. Um, besides that, um, there's also, as we see, like the art, like the art's Malphite, so maybe Malphite's getting a buff. There are definitely some champions that could get a buff that, you know, I could see doing with like Talia, Malphite, uh, Katarina, um, Tom Kench, Soraka. Like there's some different like champions that don't really see much play at all that I could see getting buffed. And that would be pretty cool too. I think that's, that's always exciting, getting um, some weaker champions that don't see play, getting them to be more powerful. That's really exciting. I'm always more excited about the, that those kind of changes than the nerfs, honestly. So that's what I want to see. All right, so let's see. All right, so we're going to start with the card updates. Um, got good paragraphs here. Looks like they're, they're telling about like what they're focusing on um, and what kind of changes they make. So I recommend going through and reading all this. I won't, I won't read it myself. You know, I won't read it right now, but looks like a good little uh, opening paragraph here. All right, first card change. Looks like we got Talia. Talia is being buffed up. Instead of now new Talia, instead of being a 2-4, is going to be a 3-5. And, of course, then therefore the level is a 4-6. So that's a good change. And that, that plus 1 plus 1 is a big deal. Like 2-4 just really was not enough for Talia. But 3-5 matches up a lot better. Because uh, we know like there's a lot of 3-3s. Like Even think about like Thresh Nasus that has a lot of 4-3s and 3-3s and stuff like that. Um, and a lot of fearsome attackers. Now Talia can block fearsome. It can trade profitably with all of those things, right? It can it can eat a four three, and stay alive. That's a big deal, honestly. So like this is, if you want to play Talia, like that's there's a huge difference between three five and two four. Like the like that jump is bigger than the jump from like three five to four six, right? Like that because you know like there's like there's not that much difference between three five and four six. But there's a huge world of difference between 2-4 and 3-5 because of Fearsome and like those kind of bodies, like I was saying, how there's just a lot of 3-3s and 4-3s running around. So that's a that's a good um, good change for Talia. That's a that's a big jump. Like that's that's important. Um is that gonna make Talia like the best thing ever? No. Okay, but it's gonna make Talia more playable than it is now. And that's a start, right? It, you don't need to <laughs> Before we had Braum, this is just kind of, again, uh, for those of y'all that play for a while, we had Braum that was like an 05 that didn't really do anything, that didn't make the, the Mighty Poro. And so nobody played Braum. And then they, they turned Braum into making the Mighty Poro whenever it survived damage the first time, and also giving it a point of power, so it had one power also. And that really made Braum really good. It could just eat up all the aggro decks because like that one power was... Um, was really nice and then you get the mighty portal it was it was awesome and so then they kind of rolled it back and they're like all right maybe braum was a little too good and they got rid of that one power again and now braum's perfectly fine as you know i play a lot of braum decks but so that's kind of like so they're kind of taking a different approach to talia instead of like how they buffed up braum multiple ways and made it really good here they're just doing a little buff to talia okay so we're making a little improvement and then you know well let's see how let's see what happens with the card 
and then they, they can come back to it the next patch or the patch after. Does Talia need a little bit more of a buff? Or, you know, is this going to make a big difference? Like I was saying, like, just with combat, the difference between 3-5 and 2-4 is a world of difference. Um, so, yeah, so that, that will be um, interesting to see if, the, you know, how, how much difference that will make. All right, so then we have Malphite, and there's there are some problems with the arts on these, but that's okay. So, all right, so new Malphite... Um, Okay, so they just changed the level up to now make it 10 plus mana of landmarks instead of 12 plus. So they lowered the um, lowered the requirement for leveling up Malphite, um, and that's good. That's going to make a big difference there too, because as we we've seen with the Eye of the Rahoric, the five mana landmark with Daybreak, that if you have um, if you have Daybreak, you get to make an additional copy of it. That's 10 mana of landmarks right there. So that singular card will level up Malphite all by itself. That's really cool. Um, I've always thought the Malphite was pretty good, though. Like, just how big it is and tough and everything. I think people are still kind of sleeping on Malphite. So I think that's a that's still a good change, though. Because it is a 7-mana champion. Should be pretty powerful. That's going to be a good one. All right, followers and spells. So Blossoming Blade now costs 5 mana. Okay, so it won't be 4 anymore. It now costs 5. They did buff it up to be a 4-3. But it will now cost five mana. I can I can go and refresh this. Just check one more time. Like I said, like these just came out, so yeah, like these arts just aren't aren't there yet. All right, and that'll make a little bit of a change. You know, that's not going to make too much of a change. Um, Blossoming Blade's already something that you play kind of at the end of the game anyway. But it'll, it'll make a little bit. You know, that will make it a little bit worse. Just making it an extra mana like that that always changes stuff. Um, it's not. Yeah, so it's not too big of a change, but like like they, I think um, they're kind of saying they don't want to really completely nerf the whole deck. Um, but that's that'll make a difference. Like um, remember, like how Lee Sin at six mana saw like no play, but then Lee Sin at five mana now sees sees play. You know, like there's there's a lot of difference between one you know with one mana. Like Karma at five mana was pretty good. Karma at six mana, not very good. Anivia at seven mana, not good at all. Anivia at six mana, pretty good. Right, like one mana makes a lot of difference. Inspiring Marshall. There we go. Okay, so they're changing the base stats to a 4-5 instead of a 4-6, and then also making it cost six mana. Okay, so there's okay, so they're gonna keep the buff at the plus two plus zero, but they're adding adding that cost to it. So now it's gonna be six, so you don't have to worry about it quite as early. This is a this is probably a bigger change than the Blossoming Blade one. Because Inspiring Marshall, you want to you want to get in play as early as possible because you want this effect in for as many rounds as possible. So this costing additional mana means that this is slower and that's going to slow down a lot because Blossoming Blade is a card you want to be like your last card anyway. So whether it costs four or five is not that big of a deal whenever, you know, like you're playing, you're, you're kind of planning on playing it round six, round seven and stuff anyway. You like, you want to play this after Inspiring Marshall. But now this is a big deal if, if like your powerhouse top end has to come in a round later yeah, there's a there's a, a difference there. Okay, and so then that's going to be it. So that's that's it for the card changes. So just a couple of small nerfs to Aurelia Azir, and I think that's good. Nothing to Thresh Nasus, nothing to the Watcher. Um, two buffs to to two newer champions that don't really see much play with the landmarks. I think this is a good patch. I mean, it's not it's not a ton, right? Like they're not trying to, um, you know fix everything right now but just a, a couple of small tweaks and just see what happens right because a couple of small tweaks will make a difference all right so let's see what else is in the patch just about the labs um yes new champions new powers and more to lab of legends that's awesome lab of legends is so much fun to play i love it so now we're gonna get some new champions we, we're getting aurelia zillion malphite lissandra and fizz awesome that's going to be great. Your Fizz is going to be a really fun champion to play with that because you always have the attack token round one. Um, that's going to be good. Um, and you get if you complete a run with each of them, you get a Malphite card back. Okay, okay. New support champions added. So now, like, you know, like the ones you get to choose, like the different champions to help support you. So now you can get uh, Sejuani, Leona, Yasuo, and Victor. Awesome. We got 18 new powers to be added, 10 common, 5 rare, 3 epic. Um, and Talia rocks now, hopefully. <laughs> Talia's deck has been updated. Okay, so they updated Talia's deck. Uh, let's see. 
We're making a few changes to the duo queue as well. Um, and some bug fixes. This is like they they sometimes just throw like some important things in here. So let's kind of read through these. Okay, we got a visual bug, um, skin names, blah, blah blah blah. Quest scrying sands now completely gives the or correctly gives the enemy minus two minus zero. Even if the player casting it cannot predict. Why would you not be able to predict? That's maybe like if you don't have any cards in your deck, maybe. I don't know why you wouldn't be able to predict. But yes, finally, Spell Shield now correctly blocks Scrying Sands. Yes, we lost a game because of that bug before, how Scrying Sands, like I needed to use a Scrying Sands to blow up a Spell Shield on Aurelian Soul, and I just didn't do it. Finally, now Scrying Sands blows up a Spell Shield. Finally. what is? I don't know what this is about. Aurelia now correctly creates Blade Surge in hand on attack the round she levels up. I guess she didn't do that before. It already seemed, it seemed like <laughs> I really had a lot of blade surges, but I guess not enough. I guess there's gonna be more blade surges. Um, okay, give it all, blah, blah, blah. Moon weapon does stuff, Howling Abyss. Well, I've, I've, I've played a ton of Howling Abyss. I've never gotten invisible cards in hand or anything like that. So, all right, looks like that's, that's about it. Um, When they, when they say like several several improvements to text across the game, I wish they would actually tell you what that is because like that, you know, they could change the text of some cards like depending on what that is. I wish they would tell you what that is. But all right, so there we go. So there's Balance Patch 2.9, short and sweet. And I think it, it really is um, doing what it's meant to do. I think this is what Balance Patches are meant to do. It's not meant to completely change the metagame and uh, change everything about the card game completely. But we just got a couple of small updates and upgrades, and I think that was pretty nice. All right. Um, so those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button. Leave those comments. Let me know what you think of the patch. Did you like the changes? Did you think there needed to be more changes? Um, and if so, what did you uh, want them to change? And also, just what, what was your favorite change that made? Are you excited about Talia, Malphite, or maybe the nerfs to Aurelia Azir? So let me know over there on the comments. But that's going to be it here for the live reaction to Balance Patch 2.9. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.